basically every drop was a something on the bottom. Every cast back was a big king. Nice fish, buddy. I think you knew that he was out there. Yeah. You acted like it. Man, it was just another spectacular day fishing on the reef That's in Key funny. West. That is uh, no respect right there. Oh, it's shiny, though. Shiny? Shiny-ish, yeah. Definitely not of the black nature. Oh man. Simrads Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Scott Walker and Captain Steve Roger. Do we need two or just one? You can grab uh, two if you want. Yeah, Thanks. two little ones like that, perfect. Two? Yep. It couldn't have been a better day, Scott. We got uh, here at Ocean Edge, you know, you're staying here. You know, obviously I just stay at the house. I meet you up here and we got the boat tied up. The place is gorgeous. It was cold as all get out. You know, I have my jeans on, which don't happen much in the Keys. And I say cold as all get out, it was probably, what, 65, I think? Got okay. a beautiful day, Scott. Blue skies. Let's go catch some reef fish. It's only blowing 10 to 15. Only? Only. It tends to make the bait fishing kind of tough when it's cold, but actually, I don't think the water had dropped yet. And uh, so the bait fishing was real fine. There was no problem with that. I see it, I see it, I see it. They're flipping everywhere. Now, I'm going down a white hole and pulling her out of gear. You're not going out there until you have a thousand baits. Well, you got to be ready. You don't know what you're going to come across. If the water's blue, now we're tuna fishing. That takes a lot of bait. You know, the reef doesn't take as much bait. Well, I just but... love how our mornings start. Pancakes for breakfast. Let's go catch some bait. And we're not going anywhere till we do. Do you love it when they all fall in the well? None on the deck. All right, come on with it. All right, well on. Yeah. Caught the bait, ran down to the edge of the reef. You know, you get there, you're gonna anchor up, you're gonna put a block of frozen chum out. That, that's always a must. Uh, then you just start trickling those pelchers back. Uh, once you come tight, a lot of times I'll put a bottom rod down right when I get there. It's just, you know. Yeah, that, does, that doesn't disturb the yellow tail. Right, give somebody something to do. If you're building it, I'm gonna keep working on the bottom rods. Yeah, yeah. What we got started here, these are um, 20 pound. Okay. These are 25 for a, a mangrove, and those are in case We'll probably end up putting wire on those. Right, two. yeah, I, I think I that's what just happened. sailfish ready till we got here. And if these fish are large too, we can even, we can do the sailfish, like you said, yeah. I didn't hear you. Free line back a, a wire on that, man, it'd be killer. We're just out, you know, to the west of Key West. Right there, it's 75 foot of water. Yeah, and where are we sitting right here? I think here? we're in 115 right here, Scott. That's a nice ledge. Look at the marks on the bottom, buddy. I am waiting for you to bring them to the surface. And uh, we're right on that edge of that hard bottom, and the water color is a little bit cloudy, but there'll be action. There'll be kings. Um, not necessarily tuna color, but I have caught them in this color water. I see some cereal mackerel back there. You've seen keep, some king mackerel back there. Keep whispering them up. That outgoing tide really affects the fishing on the reef down here because it, it brings all of that, that stuff out of the Gulf. And, and butts it up against the ocean edge. Um, whereas if you're up off Key West, you got all that land mass, and you don't have it. Now, at the Seven Mile Bridge, I'm sure you see it, right? Where it, it, that dirty water will push out on that outgoing. Yeah, man. For instance, right here, you got a lot of dirty water, and I'm sure we're on a, you, I can see the blue water out there, but th this is all outgoing stuff. And it's actually coming in, but it'll take a while for that blue water to get to us. So we still have that real dirty water which tends to have a lot of life. Got your ballyhoo in it, got your bait fish in it. Really good for reef fishing. And I'll wait on the surface for a little bit because we really want those yellowtail to come up. Um, and, and we waited a while and, and unfortunately, they were the right size fish we were after, but they never came up because of the predators. And, and once we realized uh, the kings were, you know, once we realized this situation, we put on the wire and we started fishing the surface and th these massive kingfish were just attacking every bait we put in the water. <laughs> Big old kingfish. Let's see what size we got. You help me out here and I'm ready now. Take this fish. I'm ready. I like this. I like the shadow of this thing. Oh. 
I think maybe 30. We're lucky. I just ain't got a good look at him, no sunlight. <laughs> oh, nice one. Oh, smoker gonna be fired up. I'm already getting my brine out of the freezer. That's one bait slaying joker there. Oh yeah, nice job. Cheers, buddy. Come and get him. Good job. Nice fish, buddy. I think you knew that he was out there. Yeah. You acted like it. Well, I think there's gonna be a bunch more, bro. <laughs> like I said. Not all day, we're just getting started. This area is notorious for the biggins. <laughs> when you spearfish for these, all you see sometimes is these white tips of these fins. You know, the fish blends in so well when you look down, but you see these white tips. Beautiful, buddy. Right, you can reuse that rig. Clear. I got the hook. Yep. I got it. All right, I'm going to throw that in the box. I love catching kingfish. They're so uh, visual. You know, they're so strong. Their runs are unbelievable. Yeah, these bigger ones, it's a totally different, you know, we went out in the golf and we had them airing out and everything, but these big ones, they're, they're, uh, they just take their time. They walk down the hill. That's a good start, man, on the big wire. All right, let me put him down and put him <laughs> in the box. He won't win no tournament, but he's respectable and slimy just like they always are. I can do all this real quick here, like. Long as the 350. <laughs> That's what we like. Simrad's Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Simrad, go with confidence. Bubba, the ultimate lifestyle. Sea Deck, your boat deserves Sea Deck. Waypoint. By Yamaha, reliability starts here and by Ameritrail, Hawks K Resort, Power Pro, and Costa. All right, Scotty, we're on the board. We are moving in the right direction. <laughs> Look at that drag, buddy. Kingfish on? Underneath you. There you go. Kingfish on. It's a good one. The big ones like to hang out on all these yellowtail commercial bars. Yeah, when these guys are yellowtailing in here, they'll pick them off. And a lot of times, they make the yellowtail act real spooky, too. You know what I mean? I imagine. <laughs> yellowtail don't want to come up with a bunch of kings behind them. Got him? I'll move her. It's gonna be a yellow tail, be a big old yellow tail. Yellow tails bite when the predators are hooked up. Yeah, I got him distracted. <laughs> to see a big golden row of them. Pretty far back to get the bite. Not really, but I used the whole dead pilchard because of current so much. But it's a yellow tail. A big old yellow tail. What we want. Yeah, baby. Yeah. I'll take that. Yeah, man. Old dead pilch. When you got these big kings uh, hunting on the edge of the reef, those yellowtail ain't gonna come up and show themselves. Cause these guys got they got some game. You They're not like them. the shark yeah, that just waits. Yeah, these guys can air out. They can, I mean, they can put it on. So um, I think the yellowtail were a little bit nervous, which was good for us because then that allowed us to you know, put out some live bait with wire and catch catch some kingfish. Look at that tail, bigger than my hand. That's all the power right there. That's some nice white meat. Not as big as the last one, but. Got an eyeball? Nice fish. Oh, got him right in the same spot as the last one. Hold him right there. Watch out. <laughs> These jokers will bite you. Cool. He's all yours, buddy. All right, he's going in the box for some yeah, hurt. Get him out of here. Boy, bite somebody.
Hooked up. What you got, Scotty? Barracuda. Come on, you're thinking negative on me. <laughs> <laughs> Big black grouper? Red grouper? No, he's not trying to get in the bottom. He's just shaking his head. Button snapper, don't let the shark have him. Big scamp. <laughs> You're trying to keep me interested in this bottom rod. I'm just naming all the good stuff. <laughs> all the good stuff. The bottom rod always gets active when you're not paying attention. Oh, and I farmered it. Kind of looks like a black grouper. See? You got to be positive, bro. You go from... It's a black grouper. <laughs> hey, let me get that wire straightener off your hat there, boss. Thank you, sir. Well, Steve, you got me my black. You want the bad news now or later? <laughs> Being that it's January, whatever. Yeah. Seeing it's January 8th. You're eight days too late. <laughs> <laughs> eight days and eight years. Pretty fish, though. Oh, yeah. Come snatch that hook out for me. A wire? Him. Yeah, let me cast this and I'm coming right to ahead. you. You got him chummed up. Big old mouth. Beautiful, bro. Beautiful fish. Yeah. Love them things, man. I know. So, oh, oh, God. God. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you all right? Yeah. I'll get it. I'm coming straight up with it. All right. Cool. You see them little parasites running around. Yeah, they're really racing all around. Yeah. Now we get this guy back in the ocean. Give him a good push. He'd probably take right off. All right. What do we got here? Two Just nice keep... kings, a yellowtail, and a black. Two for the smoker. Everything. Gotta get a few of these yellowtails going if I can get by the toothy critters. Yeah, everything the uh, reef has to offer right there so far, buddy. There's a lot of fishing line out there, right? Today, there's, it's all types, all colors, all sizes. Well, listen, we've been with PowerPro for a really long time. We've been with them since the beginning. Amazing product, the best there is. Well, they've even gone a step further. PowerPro now has Max Quattro. Max Quattro, what that is, is it's a line that is 25% thinner diameter. Now, what does that mean, 25% thinner diameter? That means you're going to be able to cast further. You're going to be able to put more line on the reel. The other thing is you're going to be able to use a smaller reel, right? Smaller reel, lighter, more comfortable. You can fish a little bit longer. You know, it's not going to be so much fatigue involved. Um, we're using this Max Quattro a lot when we're casting the tuna. We can stop the boat a little bit shorter, make longer casts tend to get more bites. Another thing we're doing is when we're sword fishing, being 25% thinner diameter than your traditional, say we're fishing with 65, right? So your traditional 65 versus Max Quattro 65, 25% thinner, less drag. You're dropping down 1,800 feet to the bottom to catch a swordfish during the daytime. You don't want any drag, trust me, more bites. Um, Max Quattro, maximize your fishing performance with Max Quattro. So Park has a little bit of drag to it. I think I'm going to Park. On this one. Well, that's straight 80. Might as well. Oh, goodness. I just saw him. <laughs> the one. They just got so much power when you're sitting on the edge of those rocks, you know? That's where that old saying, pop them or stop them, comes from when you're dealing with them grouper on the bottom. Pop them or stop them? Something just ate me on the way down. So I can't put it in park. What do you got there? Kingfish on the way down? Yeah. Kingfish on the way down. Nothing better than a kingfish with an eight ounce sinker swinging around your head. I will. You got him. Which way is he going? He's under the boat. In the motor. All of the above. You're good. I'm going right over top of you. Well, didn't let me get down that time, Scott. <laughs> Oh, that's the wire's not on there either, is it? <laughs> nope. That's how it works. You take the wire off, you hook the toothy critter. Put the wire on, he won't touch it. Remember yellowtailing as a kid, dropping yellowtail to the bottom, trying to catch some grouper. That's my, where you get your... My dad and 
Man, we hooked some monster kings doing that. <laughs> Just like this one. Yeah, he's not too big, but he'll ride. You ready with the gaff? Actually catching the kings with that light tackle it was really awesome and virtually no drag. Uh, even though we had six wire that they were gonna bite through, that light drag kept them, I mean, you thought you got spooled with those big fish, but it didn't. It kept them hooked up on those smaller hooks and the perfect wire, they weren't gonna bite through that. I mean, when I put out the four wire trying to get under the yellow tails, they bit right through that, those teeth. There's an old fisherman's hook in him. Is it really? Yep, in his belly. Oh yeah, look at that. It's a jig, jigs come out of him. Yeah, he swallowed the jig. Swallowed the jig, it worked its way out of him. Yeah, look at that. I wonder if I can get it out of there. See if I'll pull it out. Watch his mouth. Oh. Oh, it's an old, it's an old, uh, look at that. that's one of those old uh, triple hook, hook rigs. Not a hook, there's many hooks. Yeah, it's that, uh, like, Calcutta fishing. Oh. Cool. Gate of Ballyhoo. That's lead. You got them all. Three hooks in the gut. A lot of guys think, you know, gotta go with a trouble hook, but Truth be told, it's a great hook, yeah, but a lot of times with a treble hook, when you pull it out, it's bent. You know, it, it catches them every time, but uh, the J hook does fine because, again, uh, we, you know. Sail fish, whatever else comes up. We don't need a box full, mm -hmm. you know, so we don't need the But the, we the always end up with a box. Yeah, well, that's just, <laughs> that's because you're such a good fisherman. Though. No, no, that's, you put us on the spot, and then the tackle does the rest. There we go. <laughs> A little jag of groupers down there. <laughs> Holy cow. Of course, <laughs> the little ones cooperate. Man, that is called no drag. <laughs> that is uh, no respect right there. Oh, it's shiny though. Shiny? Shiny ish, yeah. Definitely not of the black nature. Oh man. Might be African, maybe. That might be an African. Take it easy. Doing the telltale spin. It's doing the African. <laughs> doing the African spin. African can. Oh, that's a bonus. Oh, we got us some silver meat today. <laughs> Ain't no doubt. That is beautiful thing, bud. Yeah. That is a beautiful fish. We got sushi. You been just eating them raw or you cook them at all? I I like to eat those raw, Ben. That joker don't know what's going on right now. Yeah. He, that's a nice one. They lost he lost all his rudders. He's mature. Now I did not think we'd be seeing African today, I can tell you that. Oh that sunlight glaring off of him blinding. <laughs> Oh, good one. Yeah, man, pretty fish. That is some great sushi, man. I'll mix up the rice. Are you roll it up and everything or what? Yeah. Really? I I know your kids, they go crazy. Look, I found your bait. For, when found you go my back bait? Down. When you go back down, I got your bait. Look at that thing, Scotty. That's beautiful, man. Oh, we're after. I think you got one of them on your wall, don't you? Yes, I do, thanks to you. We're leaving the skin on and you just yeah, want it? Yeah, skin on, yeah, it's just Or like do you want me to take the middle out? Yeah, do that. All right. Do like uh, one person or two person pieces. So I can, so I'm gonna cook that. Uh, pan, I'm gonna cook it just like a scallop. Uh, you wanna sear it with, in butter, hot butter, for, until it's brown. Mm -hmm. And then put it in an oven at 350 for about 10 minutes. Oh, wow. And then pull the fish out, and then add a, a lemon juice, white wine, to deglaze the pan, well, and another all, stick of butter. You're getting all fancy on me now. And then drizzle it all lemon over. Lemon juice, white wine. I'll, I'll send you my recipe tonight. Deglaze the pan. So my pan goes from the stove to the oven. Stove to the, the butter's oven. butter's still in there. Yep. I got you. That's beautiful right there. Simrad's Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Scales, every degree of water. Yeti, built for the wild. West Marine, for your life on the water. And by Shimano.
Big Pine Key, Nikon, Ocean's Edge Resort and Marina, and by Spear One Charters. Can't get enough into the blue? Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hashtag us in some of your big fish photos, and we'll feature you as fan of the week. See you there. Oh. Get him, Scotty. Park it, baby. It's parked. Park it. Oh. Park it. It's parked. Oh, it didn't go away. Oh, it's coming up. Dang, what you got? I don't know. You want to jump? I got an African, bro. Good. We, we just got our limit. One per man? That's it. Two per day, period. All yeah. Right. Bookends. Good job. It's crazy. God, that's pretty when the water hits them just right. The light. Come on. Big old moonfish. I just want to see where the hook is. Ooh. Oh. oh boy. <laughs> Grab by the tail. I'm letting go of the leader if you're gonna hold it. I got him. My hook just fell out. Yeah, I saw that. It was a piece of skin. Good job. Look at that. Good job, bro. Spot's paying off. We finished off the day. Basically, every drop was a something on the bottom. Every cast back was a big king. Uh, it was a great day. Uh, you finished it off with a big um, African pompano. And uh, man, it was just another spectacular day fishing on the reef That's in right. Key West.